Hey guys, Nick here again from Quick Tech, and today we're going to be hooking up a PlayStation 2 that I purchased on Facebook Marketplace for around $20. And we're going to be hooking that up to this guy back here, my new ultra wide LG 29 inch monitor. So we have all the tools necessary to do that, so stay tuned and see how it goes. Okay, so first let's go through what you'll actually need to get this done. Obviously, first step, you'll need a PlayStation 2. In my case, I purchased a PS2 Slim, which is hacked uh, with CFW, custom firmware ever been. And uh, I got this for around 20 bucks. You'll also need this guy, which is a PS2 to HDMI converter. This was, I don't know, 10, 20 bucks, 12 bucks. I'll leave the product link down below to everything so you can uh, get your classic gaming on yourself. So you'll need this guy, and also you'll need this, the Ding Sun, and this is a HDMI splitter. And now Ding Sun, you know, whenever I see the brand, I have to buy it. It's a well-trusted brand. Oh, never heard of it. It was the cheapest one I found on Amazon. So let's go back here and unbox these and see if we can get this uh, juiced up. So after that quick unboxing, you can see it comes with a mic... Oh, actually, this is a mini USB to USB cable, as well as the Cobwa PS2 to HDMI converter. Now, this, of course, is the input for the uh, PS2, and that's going to be your HDMI uh, that you pop into your monitor. Now, as I said, Digsun, obviously a brand that you can trust. Uh, so... In here, we have this HDMI switch. This is three in, one out. Reminds me of a video I watched once. And again, this has an infrared receiver. So that's pretty cool for the price. I think I spent less than 20 bucks on this. So uh, the rest of the unboxing, you have your really cool remote, the HDMI switch remote. And you have your cables that you need and your power brick, uh, USB. It's a little fat. Uh, but whatever. Okay, so now that we have everything unboxed, it's time to put all the pieces together and see if it actually works. So we're going to start first with the Cobwa PS2 to HDMI converter. Now, this is USB powered, and the cool thing about this is, if you remember, the PS2 actually has USB inputs. So you can power this without using any brick or anything. It should power itself up, no problem. Now, second, the Ding Sun, uh, you did see it does have somewhat of a chunky power brick. Uh, so this gets plugged in. You have your infrared, as you see here, as I mentioned before. So enough rambling on. Let's plug this all together and see how it goes. It's kind of fun. Aha! Okay. So we got the PC working quite well. Uh, so now with this infrared, I think it will automatically switch to whichever new source is being powered. But if not, we have this infrared switcher. So let's see if that works. Let's boot up the PS2 for the very first time. It's definitely been a minute. Okay, I pressed the PS2 button and you can see the screen has turned black. I'm hoping it switches to that old familiar browser, let's close that, browser system config. Let's pop in an old favorite, Killzone, and see what the experience is like. See, it, it was running in Infinity V1 something, so I'm going to have to research what I can actually do with this hacked PS2. Let's see if the kids still got it here. Okay, hopefully it's like riding a bike. Uh, it's definitely been a minute. Oh, sick. I got the sniper rifle, everyone. Okay. Some of the muscle memory isn't working uh, quite yet. Mad dark. Oh, there he is. Get him. 
He's running scared. The hell guest. Ah! The fact that you can seamlessly switch between the PC and whatever else you have hooked into this uh, Ding Sun switcher, uh, I think is fantastic. And again, I'll leave the product links down to everything that I've mentioned in this video. Uh, these again were the cheapest, but the best reviewed options that I can find is in terms of a switcher and a uh, PS2 to HDMI converter. So that about wraps this one up. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up and drop me a comment down below what your favorite PS2 game was. Uh, I do have quite a bit in my collection, and uh, it'll be great revisiting some old memories. We'll see you in the next one. Time to game. Oh! I see him. He's camping. Come take a look at my PlayStation 2 collection and see if any of these titles uh, take you down memory lane here. So obviously we have the GTAs, Cold Winter, an oldie but a goodie, uh, Metal Gear Solid, Snake Eater, probably my favorite title on the PS2. Uh, Final Fantasy 13, which was the main reason for buying this. I know they just released a remastered version for the PlayStation 4, but I got so far in 13 and never finished it that I wanted to do that in my free time. Resident Evil 4, got pretty close to beating it, never did. I'm hoping that will be on my list. Manhunt 2, now, back in the day, you could hack that, and uh, you can see all the blood and gore, which was great. You can do a soft mod. I remember those days very well. Blood Rain, I beat that. Jaws was kind of fun. Run around as a shark, kill some people. Uh, Manhunt, and another one of my favorites that doesn't get much, uh, I don't know, respect in the industry is The Punisher for PlayStation 2. Probably one of my favorites, I beat that. Uh, pretty gory game, but uh, all in all, it was very entertaining, especially your battle with Jigsaw at the end. Uh, no spoilers.